Hey guys, Josiah here from SwimDecaders, thinkorswim.net. Um, today I wanted to do a quick tutorial video on how to make your own custom scans in Stock Hacker for Thinkorswim. So to start out with, uh, I'm just going to jump right into it. We're going to the Scan tab in Thinkorswim and we're going to hop over to the Stock Hacker sub tab. And you see here that I have no filters added right now. I have a list of just, uh, just any old stocks here. Uh, but I have no filters applied to this list. So if I uh, hit scan, it'll probably bring back, yeah, 12,636 results of, from the all stocks uh, universe. Um, so to get started, um, Let's uh, first take a look at where what we have here. So it says up at the top here, it says scan in all stocks. Now you can select that and say category, all symbols in general, all stocks only, indices, futures, funds, etc. Uh, you've got your foreign exchange, non-commission and commission pairs, only optionable securities, um, so that might be interesting to some of you options traders out there that only want to deal with, um, with stocks that are optionable. Um, only NYSE, maybe you want to have some, you know, stocks that behave a certain way or, or you know, ones that you view as higher quality. Um, all NASDAQ stocks, you know, if you want to avoid the NYSE. So you can, you can narrow down your list um, to to really uh, hone in on the particular types of stocks that you're looking for just by doing this setting here. So that's a good place to start. You can also develop your own custom list to scan in. Maybe you have a universe of stocks that you've developed that you like to trade and uh, you can choose that from, in, uh, from the personal list that you have here. Uh, you can also look at these uh, other lists that uh, Thinkorswim provides built in. You know, you've got your sectors and everything here as well. Um, so I'm going to leave it on all stocks. Um, you can additionally intersect that list with another list and only return results that um, that are in both lists uh, together. So. Uh, you know, if you have a list of all stocks and then you have a list of your, just your universe of stocks, uh, the intersection of that would be only the stocks that are, uh, well, uh, if you had a, had a, a list of uh, a, a universe of symbols that you uh, had imported into Thinkorswim and you intersected that with uh, the list of all stocks, then it would just pull out only the stocks from that uh, custom list that you had uh, imported and return only results from the intersection of those two symbol lists. So that can be useful. Uh, I wish they also had the union function here, uh, they, you know, where you can join two lists. Unfortunately, they don't have that. Um, but they do have the intersect, so you can just get, uh, you know, return results that are, uh, in, uh, that are in both lists at the same time. So that's a good place to start. Choose your um, category or you know a list that you want to use. Uh, you can think about intersecting that with another list. Uh, I'm just going to leave it on all stocks right now. Now we're going to look at filters. Uh, but actually, let's let's start over here first. Um, we have the the scan menu, and anything that you do in this window. Uh, if you want to be able to just pull up quickly in the future, you want to be able to, you want to remember to save that uh, scan query with all the filters that you apply over here. It won't save the results; it saves just the setup, so that in the future you can run the scan again, uh, the same scan with the same filters, and find new results that match that scan. You can load any of your uh, saved scans from your personal list here, and I have a lot of those. Um, and there are also these public lists that they have pre-made here. You can also share whatever you have set up in this window. You can click share scan query and it'll give you a sharing link that and you can send to your friends or whatever you like 
uh, your trading buddies, uh, share it on a, a group that you're a member of or whatever you want to do there. Uh, next thing is how many results do you want to see? So you can return up to 2,000 results and that might slow down your system a little bit, bog you down. So you know you want to keep this as small as, as reasonable for your trading. Um, you can tell it uh, what types of symbols to return. Uh, if you want stocks and their options or just options or just stocks. I'm going to leave that on stocks. You can uh, automatically sort it, sort the results by um, a particular parameter. Um, you can sort it alphabetically by symbol and, and so forth, the, the quote, uh, the size of the, the stock, stock price and so forth. Um, <clears throat> or even by you know, uh, custom quotes or studies. So you can sort it by the, any of those. I'm going to just leave it volume descending, so I'll have the highest volume stocks at the very top. Um, and so let's get started here. After, after you add the filters, you'll just click scan and it will update and refresh this window. So up here, um, this is where you'll be doing most of your work. So you have four buttons here. Uh, add filter for stock, options, a study filter, and a fundamental filter. The fundamental filter button was just added in one of the most recent releases, one of the uh, new updates to the system. And that provides all kinds of cool new uh, fundamentals that you can uh, filter a stock list by. So I'm very happy to see that um, uh, the folks at Thinkorswim have finally um, added that to the uh, options up here. That will help out a lot of the, the uh, fundamental and value investors out there. Um, so you have a lot of options here that you can scan by. Um, you know, maybe you want to scan by earnings per share and so forth, and you can just drag these things to automatically input some values there for you, the minimum value and the maximum value. Uh, so you can set those however you want them. Um, and that will tell you, it'll give you an estimate already that this will narrow it, our list down from 12,000 down to 2,700. 2,700 match these two limits right here. There should be 2,700 between these two outer limits. So that's uh, how you do that. The fundamental filters, that's pretty cool that they've just added those. Um, let's start back over here though, the add filter for stock. So uh, this is going to be your basic quote information like your bid, your ask, ask size, etc. Um, you have your last price, last price quoted. Uh, you also have the open and close price. Um, you have things like shares. Um, you Maybe you care how many shares outstanding a company has, so you can sort uh, or you can filter by that. Um, and uh, volume. Now volume is an interesting one that people get confused about because this will be looking at today's volume only. And so if you're running a scan first thing in the morning at maybe, you know, uh, 9.35 a.m., five minutes after the, after the market opens, um, the volume for the day is probably not going to be very high yet, so you don't want to set this to you know something like a million or two million shares if it's just a normal bread and butter stock. Uh, you're not going to get the results that you would expect if you set this too high and run it early in the morning. This would only be you know you could set it high and, and run it in the afternoon and it probably wouldn't matter. But if you run it early in the morning or in the pre-market, you want to keep this at a, a level that would be appropriate for the time of day that it is. So if it's in the pre-market and you want to only look at stocks that um, have traded some decent volume in the pre-market, maybe you'll set it at 10,000 shares or something like that, you know, to, to say, I, I want some stocks that have, you know, been seriously trading some shares in the pre-market. Um, and, you know, that should, that should pull up some interesting pre-market movers for you. So that's an idea for you there. Um, uh, just remember, you know, don't set that too high. Uh, what I like to use instead of volume is actually the study filter. If you uh, pull up a study filter with that button there, 
and then select your drop down menu here and go to volume average volume instead of today's absolute volume we're looking at the uh, 50 period simple moving average of volume and we're saying we want that to be greater than a million or something like that I usually set that at 500k so and, and that's just something I add to almost every single scan I run um, I, I put in a filter for the last price or the close one and I say, you know, to weed out penny stocks and stuff that I don't really care to look at. I'll, I'll set these, the, the price that I want to look at between $5 and $200 or so. And the, the daily average volume, and I usually set this to 20 days just so it takes up less time to run, less resources. 20 day um, simple moving average of volume is greater than 500,000. So this narrows down the, the list substantially to just some higher quality bread and butter stocks for me. That is a really great scan to just, you know, a, a really great couple of filters to just keep on every single scan that you do. Uh, unless you're doing something really specific with, you know, low floats or, you know, penny stocks and that kind of thing. So uh, another thing to mention is that the average volume this could be about any particular period that you want. Maybe you want the average volume of the last 20 minutes to be a certain amount. And you can include the extended hours or not. Maybe you want the average volume over the past, you know, eight hours or something to be a certain amount. Um, so you can, you can change this to not just be daily volume. You can change it to intraday volume or weekly volume or whatever you like. So that's an interesting little tidbit there. But so this is what I kind of start every single scan that I do um, with. Those are the kind of the two filters that I just by default add to every single scan. Um, let's see what else Thinkorswim has for us in here in the uh, filter for stock. Um, so we've got um, you know, market cap, PE, volume. You know, there's several things in here for options traders. You can do options scans over on the Option Hacker. Um, you can also do them right here inside Stock Hacker. I don't actually see the difference. <laughs> I'm not sure why TOS uh, decided to split them up like that. You pretty much have all the same capabilities within Stock Hacker that you do in Option Hacker. So that's just a little tidbit there. The, um, the options... Um, uh, the options, uh, you know, parameters and, and quotes and everything are, are here uh, that you can add. You've got your stock filters here. You've got your option filter if you're looking for options. You can add all kinds of different things um, and, you know, narrow it down to your heart's content there. Um, study filters is where I spend most of my time. Uh, as a you know programmer, I, that, that's where I do my tinkering and everything with within Thinkorswim, and so I'm going to show you a little bit more about that. Um, so after you get all your fundamentals and your uh, just basic stock quote filters added, you know for your pricing and your volume and that kind of thing, then you're going to want to look over to study filters if you're going to do any type of technical trading or that kind of thing. You can add indicator filters. Mm -hmm. So TOS has uh, several cool little um, filters they've pre-made for us. Like you can scan for ADX crossovers, you know, Bollinger Band, all kinds of crossovers here. You know, I've got um, just a basic moving average crossover. So it says here, the 15 period simple moving average crosses above the 30 period simple moving average uh, and the average is calculated based on the closing prices. And this is on a daily chart. And so this will return only stocks that have just had that crossover happen. And so that might be interesting for some of you trend traders or um, you know, moving average traders out there. Maybe you didn't know that this uh, capability existed within Stock Hacker. You can actually pull up a list of stocks that are, uh, you know, that meet your volume, your average daily volume criteria, meet your pricing criteria, and have just had a, a moving average crossover of whatever type of moving average you like. You can use simple, exponential, weighted, uh, wilders, and whole. 
and you can set the period as well and you can say crosses above or below um, so it's pretty flexible you can also change the price that the moving average is calculated off of to any of the fundamentals they provide so that's an interesting thing uh, that actually should be useful for a, a large uh, population of traders out there and I think a lot of people don't actually know that exists um, they've got several different lists of, uh, of other scans thinkorswim is providing us you know um, on balance volume RSI uh, actually I haven't actually looked at the RSI before so that might be interesting for me to look at in the future I, I do some trading with the RSI so um, you can also um, there, there's a couple in here that I, I really find useful. Um, the average volume, which I've already showed you, lets you choose only stocks that have an average volume over a certain threshold. And you can choose unusual volume. So what that is saying is that the current bar's volume, uh, the daily bar, has increased at least 20% from its typical average over the last 50 periods. So they basically put a moving average on the volume graph and over the past 50 periods, and they're saying we want the current bars volume to be 20% above that average. And so it's saying the volume is spiking for this, um, uh, or at least you know, surging outside of its typical norm. Um, uh, for today. So you can run that scan and see what we have here. So we have 60 results total and it's showing 50 of those because I, I told it to only show 50. And um, so you could go and look at these results and um, and I actually don't even have the volume pulled up on here because I've had several other indicators on my charts in the past uh, few hours here. But uh, so you can see on a daily chart, which is what we're scanning in, that the uh, the current bars volume is approximately 20% or more above the typical 50-day average. And what I can do here to kind of verify this, I'm going to add a simple moving average to the volume graph. You just add a simple moving average and drag it onto the volume pane there, and then we'll set that to be that 50. Come on, catch up system here. Um, we'll set that to be the 50 period moving average. Um, well, I'm not sure what's going on here. I'm actually exporting in video in the background, so it's taking up a little bit of my uh, resources, but there we go. So now it's a, a 50 period simple moving average of the volume. And why isn't it showing up there? Where are you, simple moving average? Show study. Hmm. giving me values, but it's not actually showing up for some reason. So I don't know if that's because my system is bogged down right now or what's going on. But so it says today, the if you look over here in the SMA reading, it says today the um, average is 57. Oh, actually, I, <laughs> I know what this is. Uh, the average is based on volume, not on price. There we go. So, yeah, so you can see here that today, especially yesterday, but today it spiked above uh, the 50-day uh, moving average of the volume. So that's the reason it showed up on the scan over here when we ran the scan for volume increased at least 20% from its typical 50-period uh, average. So that's uh, an interesting thing you could play around with. You can change that to whatever percentage you want. Um, you know, and, and find some more extreme volume spikes, narrow this down to only the, the most extreme, you know, of, of this list of 60. Um, so that's an idea for you. Um, another one here is volume change. Um, so, yeah, so you can, you can compare the current bar's volume 
to one, you know, maybe yesterday's volume, you could set this to one. And that would change it to yesterday. Um, you could change that to, you know, a week ago to compare it to, you know, last Monday's um, volume bar and see how this Monday is comparing to last week, you know. So you can compare uh, volume across days and see if today is doing anything unusual. So that's another, another idea for you. All right, so where it gets really interesting here is where you can actually add your own custom study. And so what you're going to do is, again, click Add Study Filter. It's going to pop up the um, a new study filter uh, uh, line here, and it's going to default to ADX crossover like always. Just select that and pull your mouse down to Custom, and it will pop up this window. Now, here is the Condition Wizard. There's two tabs here, the Condition Wizard and the Thinker. ThinkScript editor. So you can kind of get down to the nitty gritty with the ThinkScript editor or just do the condition wizard, which uh, makes things a little bit easier for the uh, non coders out there. So it defaults to having this ADX crossover study in here. We'll just delete that. So we have no conditions put in here yet. So let's add a condition. We'll just say um, the study, and I'll type in simple moving average to look it up real quick there. So I've chosen, I, I want uh, the simple moving average, the nine period simple moving average. Uh, and you can adjust these parameters and everything, change it to whatever type of moving average you want. But we'll just leave it here. The nine simple moving average uh, crosses above the, we'll just choose another study here, exponential moving average um, of nine periods. And uh, hit save. And so it says simple moving average crosses the the exponential moving average. Now let's add another one real quick. Um, we'll say um, not a value, we'll go with a price. Um, fundamental stock data here. Um, the volume, I've chosen the volume as the price point. Um, and Zero means the current bar. The offset of zero means the current bar's volume. So the volume of this bar is uh, greater than, we'll just say, the volume of last bar. So we'll choose price, volume, and we'll change this from zero, which zero again is today. So I'll change that to one, which is one day ago. So that's yesterday. So today's volume is greater than yesterday's volume. And I hit save. So we've got a simple moving average crossing the exponential, and the volume today is greater than yesterday's volume. Now, notice up here it says check if all of the following conditions are met. So it wants both of these conditions to be met before it will consider that stock to meet the criteria. You can also do any of these following conditions. So it would be like an either or. If the simple moving average is crossing the exponential, or if the volume today is greater than yesterday's volume, then in either of those cases, the stock meets the criteria. But if we put it on all of the criteria, all of the conditions, then it means both have to be true before that stock uh, or symbol gets returned. So now you see it's populated in here, the uh, conditions, and it says custom over here now. So that's your custom scan query and we'll run it and see what we have here. So we have 30 results where this crossover is happening and the volume is increasing from yesterday and also where the uh, average volume and prices are within these two parameters here. So that's what we have. That's uh, that if you've gotten this far, you've created your first custom scan. So I'm proud of you. Give yourself a round of applause. Let's go back to and get to work and do something a little more complicated here though. We'll pull back up the custom editor here by clicking this drop down, hitting custom again, or just by clicking the, the pencil over on this side, that might be the easier way to do it. Uh, there's a pencil over here where you can edit, uh, it's just you know changing the settings for, uh, for these custom study filters. Click that pencil and you have your condition wizard up here. Now if you switch over to think script editor and tab there, you'll see that it has the same text that's on the uh, stock hacker window. It has a, the full uh, 
text populated in here for you to edit. So now we're going to get into the nitty gritty of uh, how to write some more complex uh, scan queries. So um, say we want, um, I don't know, maybe we want the volume to be greater than yesterday's volume by 20%. So uh, that's something that maybe the, you know, uh, condition wizard can't do as easily. So uh, I'll just space this out here to give us some space. The spacing doesn't matter in ThinkScript. Um, it's basically saying this condition and this condition is true, just like a, we mentioned a minute ago, the, all of the conditions are true. That's what that and means. This and this have to be true. So what we'll do here is we'll say the simple moving average is crossing and the volume is greater than uh, volume from one bars ago. Um, what I'm going to change that to is, uh, let's see, how do I want to do this? I want to do... Um, I'll do volume times 0.8 is still greater than the volume from one bars ago. So if you multiply the volume times 0.8, what do you have? You have 20% less volume uh, than the current day's original volume. So what that's saying is um, we want the current day's volume to still be at least 20% greater than the volume from one bars ago, yesterday's volume. So that's one way of doing it. It's a little confusing, maybe a little bit backward, but that's one way of making that happen. And if you think through it, I think that should, <laughs> I think that should work. Um, but you know, I make mistakes too. So, uh, so here we go. And so now we have 15. So we've narrowed it down because uh, not only are we saying the volume has to be greater today, but we're saying it also has to be 20, at least 20% greater than yesterday's volume. So that narrowed our list down to only 15 stocks. Um, what if we wanted to do something a little more complicated? Let's see, um, how can we complicate this a little more? Um, crosses above moving average exponential. Um, let's, let's say, Let's do this just a little bit differently. Let's say that the simple moving average is greater than the exponential moving average today and the simple moving average. If you notice there, it just auto-completed. So you can um, type, start typing in something that you know exists and it will pop up some options there for you to hit enter and uh, select. So I'm going to say the simple moving average of one day ago was also greater than the moving average exponential. Oh, I typed it in wrong. Move average exponential of one bar ago. So not only, and we have to put an and here, so that uh, this condition and this condition and this condition are all true. So what this is saying is the simple moving average today is greater than the moving average exponential and the simple moving average yesterday was greater than yesterday's exponential moving average as well. So we've had two days in a row where it's been greater than and we can just, you know, for the, for the heck of it, we can go ahead and add one more here and we'll say for two days ago so we got today, yesterday, and the day before. Both of those averages have to be, uh, the simple moving average has to be on top. So let's click OK and see if we have any results here. I don't know if that'll be, they'll have any results or not. And we actually expanded the results. Um, and why that is, is because it's not actually, that we change it to greater than. From previously it said there, it was only, it was crossing today. Well, it could have crossed maybe 10, 10 days ago or something. And so right now we're just saying it's greater than that moving average. So we've substantially changed our results here. But you can't, uh, just to, to make things complicated and you know add a little bit of uh, extra 
stuff to do here. I wanted to show you how to scroll back in time a little bit with using these bracketed numbers. You can say two days ago, one day ago, 10 days ago, whatever you want to put in there. And it will scroll back in time and look at the, the bar two or 10 days ago and compare it to whatever else you want to compare it to. Um, now this is actually, uh, this is the simplest um, type of ThinkScript coding you can do in here. Uh, you can actually take this a, a step further and start defining your own variables and defining your own plots and things like that. Um, but that's probably going to be a little bit of, you know, outside of the scope of this video and outside of what most people want to get involved in. So we'll just leave it at that. If you guys have any questions, um, just leave me a comment below. Um, if you've enjoyed this, if this has helped you any, if you enjoy any of our other videos, please uh, consider subscribing to the channel. That will help us out a lot and share it with all your friends. Um, check us out at thinkorswim.net. We have uh, a lot of custom scripts and scans and everything created there in advance for you. And uh, we try to post some of these tutorial videos to help you out as well. So um, go ahead and subscribe. Leave us a comment if you have any questions or, or uh, feedback for us. And uh, appreciate you watching. Thank you.